Everybody loves synthetic food dishes. No, I don't. Right? I don't. Dude? All right, well, I'll try to make it as easy and as straightforward as possible, so maybe you might love synthetic division. So here we have, um, we have a two polynomials that we need to divide. Now, we've already worked on the long division uh, method, so what I want to do is I want to show you how to do it using synthetic division. Now, there's a couple things that we need to have um, in place for us to use synthetic division. First thing is we need to have our divisor in the form of x minus k, which we have, which is very good. And... Then also we need to have a, uh, a polynomial. We're going to put this in descending order. So uh, when, we, when we set up a polynomial, one thing that uh, uh, we, got, we talk about is what are the coefficients of uh, each one of our uh, terms, or of each one of our, our variables. So a lot of times on this is a cubic, uh, to a cubic degree, I can write ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Now the reason why I'm writing this is this is, you know, um, this is when, remember when we were talking about our quadratic, you know, form, ax squared plus bx plus c? Well, this is the exact same, but when it's to a uh, degree three. And what's important about this is I'm assigning a, uh, a coefficient for each one of these for the terms. Because when you're doing synthetic division, it's, it's very important for us to make sure we have a coefficient for every term even if that term is there or not. Then the next thing is we have to divide by something that's x minus k. Now I'm gonna put k in parentheses because I want you guys to understand k, we're actually taking the value of k and it's just minus k. So many students always make worry of this with it's, oh, it's just a negative value. Well, think of just k as positive and being x minus your k. And I'll kind of show you an example here in a second. So when we're, doing, when we're going to be doing synthetic division, it's going to look like this. You take your value of k with inside the parentheses. Don't worry about the x minus. Just take the value of k. And then you need to make sure you set up a, b, c, d, and whatever else you have. OK? And I'll show you the process here in a second. So let's first set up our uh, problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of have a little box like this. And let's see, our k for this value is 6. It's not a negative 6. Our value of k is actually 6. See how it's x minus k? Does everybody see that? So our k is going to be 6. Then let's write up our a, our b, our c, and our d. Our a in this problem is 3. Our b in this problem is a negative 16. Our c, we don't have a c term, do we? So just like long division, if you don't have that term, you have to put in a 0. We have to have a placeholder for that. Okay, That's a big mistake that a lot of people miss. And then we also have our constant, which is a negative 72. OK, is everybody cool at this point so far? Setting it up really is the you know the main important thing because really the rest of this is just a very kind of simple algorithm. You just take your three, your first number, and bring it all the way down. Then you take your six and you multiply it. Six times three gives you eighteen. Then these two, you add. So when you go down, you add. When you go diagonal, you multiply. Negative uh, sixteen plus eighteen is going to be a positive two. 6 times 2 is 12. 0 plus 12 is 12. Slow. Uh, huh? Slow? Yeah. Slow down? Yeah. 3, drop down to 3, right? Yeah, 6 that. times 3 is 18. Negative 16 plus 18 is 2. Okay. 6 times 2 is 12. Mm -hmm. 0 plus 12 is 12. And then 6 times 12 is going to be a positive 72. Negative 72 plus 72 is 0. So now we did that. We got like halfway there. But now we need to determine actually how do I rewrite this. Well, remember our last term is always going to be what we call, remember, like our R or our remainder. Right? That's our remainder. So the next term is going to be your constant, which in this form is going to be C. This is going to be my BX. And this would be my ax squared. 
And fortunately, these are all positive, so what you can write is 3x squared plus 2x plus 12. So the one way I always like to work, look at this is you have your remainder. If your remainder is there, no, all right, that's fine. Then just work from your constant to your linear to your um, you know, square term, then to your cubic term or whatever. So always work backwards and finding this out. So therefore, my final answer is 3. So x minus 6 divided by that leaves you 3x squared plus 2x plus 12. Yes? What did you say is uh, the time when you can't use synthetic and you have to be used to all I will show you an example, but it has to be in this form. Your divisor has to be x minus something. So we're going to talk about how different ways we can change it and stuff like that, but it has to be in that, in that format. Yes? Can't you do it if it's like 2x2, you just have to set it equal to 0? Yes, that we're gonna. Sh that's what I'm saying. Like other videos, I'm gonna show you how. What I'm saying is, like, if you had like another polynomial, like you couldn't you couldn't divide a trinomial. If this was a trinomial, not a binomial, do you see what I'm saying? They're, we're gonna learn techniques. Yes, if it's like two x minus five, how to do that, right? You set equal to zero, we'll solve for that. What I'm just saying is, you can't. If this was like x cubed plus two x minus one, we wouldn't be able to divide that using synthetic division. That's what I'm saying. We could do it longer. Is there a question? Maybe? No? You have another question? Mm -hmm.